It's Thursday, August 11, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. Yes, I'm doing this a little early, a little bit late, however you want to think of it. The reason I'm doing it right now is because I'm leaving town early, early tomorrow morning for two weeks. If you want to know more about that, head over to my second channel, Twill Talks, and you can see all the behind-the-scenes stuff in my vlog and everything. But let's go ahead and get started with the news. Just about a week ago, Ubuntu 11.10's Alpha 3 came out. The biggest new feature with this is that they've moved on to the kernel version 3.0. Although I believe they're still using a release candidate, they've probably in the last week updated to the final stable version. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference to be honest. Additionally, the Fedora project is well on their way to having their Fedora 16 release ready. It should be coming out in October and there are a bunch of system administrator related changes, but there are a couple of changes that were slightly for desktop users. For one, they're moving to Grub2 from Grub1. That is a change that a lot of other distros made a while back, so it is nice to see Fedora, I guess, catching up in that way. Additionally, there were supposed to be plans to change to ButterFS or BTRFS as the default file system, but it looks like that has fallen through at this point and gotten pushed back to Fedora 17. And speaking of Fedora, since their default desktop environment is GNOME 3, earlier this week, Linus Torvalds on Google Plus had a very long rant about the state of GNOME 3 and how how it is an unholy mess in his opinion. He says that he's ditched it entirely and moved over to XFCE. If you remember, he moved away from KDE when KDE 4 came out, he went to GNOME. When GNOME 3 came out, he's now gone to XFCE. But in addition to this, he's calling out the developers and asking them to come up with a fork of GNOME 2 so that they can go back to the way things were. From what I understand, there actually is a fork being worked on at this point, so maybe he will get his wish. The way that he looks at it though, XFCE is a huge step down from GNOME 2 in terms of usability and just general ease of use. However, GNOME 3 was a huge step down from GNOME 2 in his opinion and XFCE would be a step up, so I definitely can't fault him for that. However, a lot of the complaints I saw out of his post seemed like things that extensions can take care of, so that may be worth looking into for him, but I think he's looking for an out-of-the-box, just-works solution, rather than having to add in a bunch of things that may or may not break the system. Let's move away from Linus-type news and on to a little bit of Android news. This week, and actually I think it was just earlier today, the TeamSpeak beta for Android came out. If you're not familiar with TeamSpeak, it's an internet-based client-server type application where you can connect to a server and chat with people online, voice to voice. Completely free, though I don't believe it is an open source app. However, it's very nice to see it coming to the Android marketplace, even if it is only in beta for now. It does add that one extra way to get in touch with your friends or family or whoever else you're talking to on TeamSpeak if you didn't have enough ways to do that for free already. And speaking of source code, it was confirmed earlier this week that the source code for Doom 3 is going to be released later this year. Now, if you're not familiar with Doom 3, it is an amazing looking game that is currently, I think, Windows and Mac only. So if the source code does get released, and I think if the sources, like the actual, the graphics and the sounds and everything get released as well, then it will be made available for Linux eventually. Somebody will compile it for Linux. However, I have a feeling that the resources will not be made available, just the source itself. But one way or another, that does provide another engine and another way for Linux-based games to be easily created. And speaking of gaming, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about today, the Humble Indie Bundle, which we talked about briefly last time, has actually come to an end at this point. Before it ended, though, they kept adding more and more games, as they normally do. They added in the complete second Humble Bundle if you were giving more than the average amount. And the last time I looked, the average amount was something like 450 or 475 or if you'd purchased it before they added that, that certain stipend into it, you got the free Humble Bundle too. At this point, I've got all of the bundles they've released, so it's not a huge deal, but it is definitely nice that they keep giving back to the community and adding more and more things to these bundles to make them even more worthwhile. But the great thing about the Humble Bundle 3, now that it is over, they say that it's their biggest bundle yet. They sold over 372,000 copies for a grand total of over $2.1 million brought in. So congratulations to the Humble Bundle developers. I do look forward to seeing more Humble Bundles in the future. But that's it for me for today and probably for the next two weeks, unless Unless I can get a stable and decent internet connection in another country. As always, thank you so much for watching, thank you for your time and support, and I will see you again as soon as possible. Bye.